Hi, second grade students. Welcome to phonics and language time. I am excited to be able to teach you some new things that we've never learned before and review some things that we might need review on. Before I begin, I want to let you know that I still want you reading in that um, handbook for reading book. Just pick a page and read through some special sounds because we don't have our special sound flip book anymore. So I want you to um, find the special sounds and just read through them. Even if you just want to read the special sounds on each page, that's really helpful. It's not something you have to turn in, it's not homework, but I would highly suggest um, reading those special sounds once a week, just going through them. So please do that. But let's go ahead and begin with this video. Um, we are going to be doing two things in this video, two different things. The first thing is we'll be introducing something new. So the concept of antonyms. Everyone say antonyms antonyms and then after we kind of do this little mini lesson we'll do a miniature review on commas and the rules that we use for commas and where commas go okay and that'll be the end of the video so um, let's begin if you want to follow along we are on page 241 which should be one of the I believe the first pages that you have been given starting on a Tuesday so page 241 at the very top there's a paw print right and we always pause pause for the paw prints because the paw prints are either going to tell us something new or they're going to remind us of something. So this paw print is telling us something new. It's telling us about antonyms. It says that antonyms are opposites. They are words whose meanings are very different. Okay, so we're going to look at three examples of antonyms. Antonyms are words that are opposites. So you've got two words and they are opposite meanings. So we've got this word hot and this word cold. They are opposites. They mean totally different things. They are antonyms. Everybody say antonyms. Antonyms, okay? Old and young. They are opposites. They mean two different things. They are antonyms. Light, dark. They are opposites. They are antonyms. They mean totally different things. Our book tells us that antonyms are opposites. They are words whose meanings are very different. So, on page 241, you've got two different ways that you get to play with antonyms. This one is asking you to color in the circle of the two words that are opposites. So let's see here. I'm going to read those four words, and I want you to tell me if there are any words that stick out to you as, oh, those are opposite words. Because if they're opposites and they mean two different things, then they are antonyms. Bright, strong, dark, sun. Bright and dark. That's right. That light is very bright that light is very dark. So those would be opposite yeah. meanings, right? What about bright and strong? They mean different things, but they're not completely different. They're not opposites, right? If I say you are very bright and you are very strong, I'm saying that you're two different things, but not opposite things, right? I could say you are strong and he is weak, right? Those would be opposites. So, antonyms are opposites. They are words whose meanings are very different, like hot and cold, old and young, light and dark. Now, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we're going to review some comma rules, okay? So, at home, I want you to already be brainstorming. What are some things that Mrs. Carlin is probably going to tell me about commas? Anybody think of something? I know we talked about commas a lot before we went on our little break here, um, but right here on page 242, it has a little dog bone, and whenever we see a dog bone, it's going to remind us of something, right? It says, remember, so we stop and we read the remember section. It says, anytime we list three or more items in a sentence, we use commas to separate them. So do you remember when I talked about a grocery list, 
right? A grocery list has items on it. Let me write out a quick little grocery list. Have you guys been grocery shopping? I hope not. I hope you've been staying home. <laughs> My husband has, is having to do all the grocery shopping for us right now, and I don't think that he likes it very much. <laughs> All right, so here's my grocery list. I'll go ahead and have four items. We've got milk, <laughs> eggs, bread, and cake. <laughs> All right, milk, eggs, bread, and cake. So instead of writing in a list, I could shoot my husband a text message and say, hey, Will you please pick up milk, eggs, bread, and cake? Okay, and if I wanted to write that in a sentence, my list of items has to be written in a certain way with commas. So I would say, please get, I would use please because that would be polite, right? <laughs> please get milk. Okay, that's one item, and then to separate milk and eggs, I would put a comma. So milk, eggs, comma, because I'm separating eggs and milk, bread, okay, but I, do I need to put a comma right after that one? I do because I'm going to separate the last section. So please get milk, eggs, bread, comma, and now that and tells me that I'm about to hit the very last word on my list. So is and something that's on my list? No. So there does not have to be a comma after and. It goes after this one but not after and because and is not on my list. And comes right before the last thing on my list and it tells me, all right, I don't need any more commas. So please get milk, eggs, bread, and cake. And what do I do at the end of the sentence? I put a period, but maybe I'm really excited about this and I want an exclamation point because I want that cake and I'm very excited for it. All right, there's your little reminder on how to use your commas correctly when you're listing items where there are three or more items in a sentence. All right, there you go. Happy phonics and language time.